Hello visual effects people, I'm AK, this is Fluid Ninja, and this time we are talking about flow maps. How to create flow maps, what a flow map is, uh, how to embed flow maps into materials. Yeah, shortly that's it. Uh, let's start uh, with an example file, a very simple material where I connect a noise texture to an emissive output. Let's say I would like to provide some texture coordinates for this by adding a texture coordinate node. Alright, what if I change uh, this setup by adding uh, something that changes by time, uh, that is a linear growth, the time function. I'm connecting it to this add and the result is that the UV space is starting to offset. What if I would say um, that uh, I don't want to add a constant value to each of the UV space pixels, but I would like to add a texture for it, or a combination of this time function and a texture. Well, let's just do that. Let's just give it a try. I'm adding together this uh, polar coordinate texture and the time, and I'm connecting it to this original node. As you could see, something has changed. From now on, uh, we, I'm not just adding a constant value on each tick to these texture coordinates, but I'm differentiating uh, this offset by adding a bitmap. So that is the basic concept. And um, since Ninja is a fluid simulator, it is particularly useful to create uh, such maps, maps that could define how to offset the pixels of another texture and that is why we are using uh, Ninja for creating flow maps. The thing is um, that we have a module, a dedicated module in Fluid Ninja that is dedicated to, uh, well, to create and to use flow maps. Um, I'm just starting the Fluid Ninja toolkit and here we go, that is the Ninja flow module. If you click on this roll down menu, you could see that we have different modules. And uh, Fluid Ninja is to create flow maps. In other chapters, we have discussed in details how to export flipbooks or single images. But the thing is that we are going to use these red, green colored velocity maps to make other textures flow. And we are going to perform this in the Ninja Flow module. So I'm just clicking on it. The default state of the module that all slots are empty. Um, I'm telling you that we have three input fields and one output. Let's just uh, fill up these input fields one by one and try to figure out what they do. So uh, have a look at the side panel and this input section with the three inputs. First, let's pick a flow target. Let's try to pick the same noise that we have uh, checked in the material editor. Here we go. So that is the flow target, which means we are trying to animate this static texture by, um, by calling a velocity map generated with Fluid Ninja or painted by hand or wherever it comes from. So as a second input, I'm providing something for input velocity. Okay. Uh, what if I add this uh, very basic image of the UV space? As you could see, uh, the output uh, viewport is now active and it is showing um, this zooming cloud-like thing since this input velocity is telling uh, um, the UV offset mechanism to push these pixels sidewards. And so what is this uh, third input for? Well, let's uh, try to something uh, try something like a grayscale mask. Yeah, this torus is a good example. You see the difference? I'm switching to full screen. Uh, this toroid shape is masking the velocity field. So that is the simple uh, explanation how uh, you could control flow maps in Ninja Flow. And uh, let's have a look at a few more examples. If you click on this preset selection roll down menu, you could see I, I have provided a few. Uh, this one is a nice example. Uh, we are using just three textures. Again, a target texture, this colorful guy here, 
uh, a velocity map generated with Fluid Ninja and uh, a density map, a mask also generated with Ninja and the result is uh, this uh, flowing paint-like thing it's not uh, <laughs> it's not very spectacular but the thing is that I'm using three simple textures and I could export the whole thing into a material which I'm going to do right now by pressing this button here and it is putting it to the output folder uh, let's have a look at a few more presets yeah for example this smoke ring thing um, I'm going back to Ninja to show you how the original uh, setup looked like. So I'm going to Fluid Ninja, try to find something. Uh, yeah, it was probably called uh, Smoke Ring or something. Yeah, here we go. Um, so as you could see, we have this simple uh, ring like input. With Ninja, we are making it flow uh, in a circle. And we are exporting uh, the output density and the output velocity to a bitmap. And then in NinjaFlow, we are going to use it with this smoke ring setup. Again, it's just a simple uh, single image of the density map and the velocity field. And that's, that is making this uh, target texture, this noise like thing flow. Uh, we have very few parameters here. In the Ninja Flow, because basically Ninja Flow is made for uh, just matching these textures. So it's like it could be imagined as a mixer where you could pick your uh, favorite density map and velocity map and have a quick preview how it could look like. But again, it's not mm, meant to create uh, an advanced setup. Uh, Ninja Flow is really meant to to match your textures export them to an advanced material and continue experimenting in the material setup again uh, just showcasing a few of these um, examples right on uh, first one thing that you have to notice that you might notice is that right now I'm calling an animated texture a flipbook as density mask and as a velocity map so uh, in NinjaFlow, you are not limited to use a single frame, a static image as a flow map, but you could uh, use uh, the Ninja generated animated flipbooks to make your image flow. So again, we have this target texture and we are making uh, this target texture flow by the using of an animated velocity map and an animated mask. And now let's have a look at these options that we have, uh, these simple options in this mixer surface. Uh, blending density. If I set this to zero, uh, I see the original image, the ninja generated flipbook. If I set it to one, uh, it is 100% flow, um, the target texture distorted by the flow map. Remember our target texture was this noisy guy. So, uh, with, um, by setting this value between, somewhere between 0 and 1, I could uh, mix um, the, um, the source density and the target texture. If I set it to 0 0.5, it is a 50% mixture of the two. And here is the, one of the most important aspects of um, NinjaFlow. As, uh, let's assume that we have a very... Um, low resolution uh, flipbook that is generating this flow thing and we have a high resolution noise and we are adding this high resolution noise uh, to this low resolution flow map and we are mixing the two and the output is um, is better than just having a flow map or than just having an animated density map. So it's a good combination and if you do it the right way you could create very efficiently uh, VFX assets that don't consume too much memory and GPU and still look good. Right on. Uh, what is this multiplier thing for? Uh, right now it is set to 1 
if I set it to zero, this means that uh, the input density is not masking the velocity space at all. As you could see, the velocity space, the input velocity, is filled with information. It is trying to tell each pixel where to go. And now I'm basically enabling uh, this velocity information to affect all the pixels of the target texture. So, as you could see, the whole texture field, the whole UV space is moving in motion. And when I'm setting this uh, to 1, it means I'm enabling the density mask to control the area where the velocity map is uh, influencing the target texture. You see, it's not all the texture space, not all the UV space that is flowing, but uh, this flow effect is limited to this torch-like, flame-like uh, area in the middle. Um, so again, I would like to emphasize that NinjaFlow is a simple mixer. And we are going through an example to prove this. Uh, I'm loading in this 8 frame setup. It's very crude, it looks very primitive, and as you could see, we have this uh, wobbly uh, <laughs> flowing thing in the middle of the input density. We have the velocity information belonging to it. As an animated velocity map, it is distorting this uh, single noisy target texture. And again, it looks very crude and almost nonsense. But as you will see, when we are exporting an advanced material and starting to work with this guy uh, through this uh, advanced material, suddenly it becomes much more interesting. Since NinjaFlow is just a mixer, it is providing the basic setup to, to develop your uh, visual effects. So, I'm quitting Ninja. And on the content examples level, uh, I'm going to find this guy, this turbulent 8 frame setup, and see uh, what we can do with the advanced material. So long. So, um, I'm going to this examples level. So here we go. We are on the ninja content examples level. And you could see this 8 frame flipbook generated by Fluid Ninja the density map and the velocity map. And we have already combined these two maps with a flow target in NinjaFlow. And here is uh, the res resulting uh, crude uh, material playing this flipbook. And if I enable this uh, frame blending, the motion uh, becomes much smoother because, as discussed in a previous chapter, uh, Velocity-based frame blending is kind of uh, using the UV space distortion to smoothly uh, transform the pixels from one frame to the next. And here is the, the key step. Uh, I'm combining uh, this Velocity interpolated flipbook with a flow map. As we have discussed on the NinjaFlow interface, I have been using a simple noise and blending it in a 50% mixture. Let's see how this works in the material. So here is the crude guy. Here is the crude guy with velocity interpolation on. And have a look at this, uh, at these material options on the right. So if you are in the advanced flow material generated by NinjaFlow, it's very similar to this advanced material that Fluid Ninja is able to generate, except that we have a few more options, like this flow target uh, thing, that uh, enables us to use flow maps. So, uh, as a next step, you could see uh, here's the 50% blend. Uh, this is the same option that we have witnessed in uh, at the NinjaFlow uh, user interface. If I set this to zero, we have the pure density map, and it looks fluent just because we are using this velocity interpolation. If I set this uh, mix to 1, we have the pure noise. And as a 50% blend, it is mixing the original Ninja generated frames with this uh, noise that is already animated by the same velocity map that is blending between the density frames. It sounds complicated, but it's really not. Again, it's just three kind of input textures mixed and so, what other options we have? 
uh, like uh, this contrast thing. It, this could be very interesting. Let me just switch on the background. Uh, you might have noticed that we already have some uh, distortion like um, refraction enabled. Well, yeah, uh, it's going to be very prominent in a second. So let me just adjust contrast. Yeah, again, I'm influencing the highlight zone. As I influence that, uh, the density information slowly disappears. And as you could see, we have this uh, turbulent uh, refraction like thing in the background, which is going to sell the product as a flame, as a, a source of heat. But again, so I'm just uh, fading this back. And as a next step, I'm going to use color one and color two uh, to make it a bit more flame like. Now, have a look at this. I have already adjusted uh, the colors. And well, yeah, it, it starts to look like a flame to me. Uh, again, as you could see, it's a bit like uh, mapping the whole thing on a hemisphere. And it is because I have been using the geometric distortion option. Yeah, distort mesh. Again, we have been talking about this in a different chapter. And let's have a look at the final result. Uh, I'm telling you that I was just boosting this uh, emissive value, which was already high, to an even higher value. And the final outcome is like uh, this flame ball. I have to mention that we have been using these GPU particles. Uh, to create sparks around this flaming thing. So it's like a combined effect, a simple quad where we are using this uh, flow map animated flipbook texture and some GPU particles. And the final result is like this, this flame ball thing. So that is uh, the complicated use or the advanced use of um, flow maps. But Again, here we are. We have been using like an animated flipbook. Let's have a look at the um, examples that are much more simple. Here we go. Uh, have a look at all these um, colorful guys here. Uh, the common thing is that they are all uh, generated by using three static images. The flow target, the velocity map and the density map masking them. And with this very uh, GPU and memory efficient technique, you could create like swirling, zooming clouds or something that is drifting upwards or uh, circling around. Again, it is meant to create very efficient, simple effects. And there was, uh, uh -huh, have a look at this. This is not a flow map thing, it is a ninja generated flipbook with an advanced material and a spatial gradient and it's 16 frames. And if I would like to create a more efficient version of this 60 frame flipbook, I convert it to a 1 plus 1 frame uh, flow map version. And it's still working, so kind of uh, ghost-like uh, flow is going on here. And the thing is that this velocity map is distorting uh, this density map. Yeah, in this case, I'm, I'm not even using a noise. I'm just uh, using this density map as a mask and as a target in the same time. So it's, it's just really just a simple velocity map uh, pushing these pixels in the UV space. Um, Oh, there is so many things that we could uh, talk about uh, related to flow maps, but I'm going to do that later on. Right now, I guess it's a good introduction for the topic, and I would like to encourage you to experiment with uh, Ninja Flow and try to do your own tricks. And later on, I might do some updates for this video and get into more advanced tricks. Thank you for your patience and see you next time.